the Quran is the most protected of all scriptures and in fact we as Muslims believe that God in his divine wisdom and plan has protected the Quran from any type of alteration from any type of deviation from any type of of, uh, uh, of, uh, uh, mis of miswriting because the Quran tells us that God has revealed this Quran and he is going to protect it and we believe that the Caliph Uthman's actions were actions that are very logical very reasonable and they ensured the protection of the actual script of the Quran so that is how meticulously we are talking about transmitting the Quran word for word, letter for letter, ayah for ayah, surah for surah, exactly as he was told. This idea that the Quran is preserved word for word, or you know, you know, haraka for haraka, you, you don't you don't find this kind of opinion in the in the classical sources. And people will always tell you, well, the Quran is preserved and, you know, inna nazdalna dhikra wa inna lahu la It means, you know, it is, it is protected. Well, sure, but, you know, let us go, you know, to these sources and tell us what does it mean, preservation. So you go to, uh, you again, go to the any book of exegesis, go to Zamakhshari, go to Tabarit, go to Qurtubi, go to, uh, to any of those tafsir. And then they will never tell you that this verse means that the Quran is preserved word for word or haraka bar haraka or harb bar harb. They never say that. You know, all they say, well, the Quran is preserved from uh, omission and additions. It's preserved from the devils or the shayateen to add something to it. It's preserved that the shayateen would never take anything from it, right? So this whole notion that it is protected, you know, word by word, uh, it's something that is used, you know, you know, for the masses, in a sense. Um, and it's not, you know, based on any academic research, academic, not necessarily Western academic, I'm just talking about even academic research by classical Muslim scholars, because they already knew that when you talk about uh, the Quran being preserved uh, word by word or haraka by haraka or etc., that we do have many mm, problems and inconsistencies in the tradition regarding those variant readings. If I give you a blank piece of paper, what are you going to write on it? Which one of these are you going to write? Which one will it be? Will it be Hafs? Will it be Warsh? Will it be Kalud? Will it be Ibn Amir? Will it be Ibn Kathir? Will... And it goes on and on and on to 30 of them. And his response was, don't ask me that question. This is something we don't talk about in public. And finally, after 25 minutes of insisting, asking him a second time, which are you going to write on it? What did Yasser Qadi finally admit? Well, he finally admitted. They're all the Quran. All of these are the Quran. Just take a look at these two right here. One, two. These two right here. This is the Warsh I have in this hand, and this is the Hafs I have in this hand. These are the two most popular Qurans in the world today. There are 5,000 differences between these two Qurans that our team in Australia has now been able to find. 5,000 differences, folks. You cannot say that these are both the Quran. Not with 5,000 differences. The Hafs reading anywhere in the world today, anywhere you go. This reading we have, we know, it's been preserved even to the dot, to the letter, to the vowel, to the sound. Uh, I, am, I am very serious, this is not just statements, I'm very serious inshallah of slowly withdrawing from social media um, completely and, uh, and having alternative platforms because I feel that um, uh, I, I am not... Um, I, I don't want to be involved too longer on public platforms and I'm going to be gravitating towards uh, not being involved in public anymore uh, and I'm just I'm just keep preparing the way for that inshallah before it happens inshallah this is my goal in a few years at max inshallah to me makes an awful lot of sense for honest Muslims it, this is a question that honest Muslims really can't answer and it is a question that we in the West especially those of us who come from a biblical background who have had every question throughout the Bible we can we don't have this difficulty of answering difficult questions there is no question you can ask of the Bible that we if we don't know the answer we will find the answer there is nothing there is no red line beyond which you cannot ask <laughs>